We are Two Book Ramblers, a podcast to get you to read beyond the lines. Like Elvis said, the sun's down and the moon's pretty. It's time to ramble about books. Today in Two Book Ramblers, on a first name basis, books with just a first name for a title. Like one name celebrities, there are books with one name titles. The sole mention of such titles is evocative of all the feelings, good or bad, that the eponymous character represents. At least like Carrie, Hamlet, Rebecca, or Ulysses would be sufficient to prove this point. But we will elaborate. The first book we want to talk about is Carrie by Stephen King. A first name that, thanks to the mastery of Stephen King, calls up chilling memories on those who have read this debut novel. A tormented teenager using telekinetic powers for retribution, written by Stephen King, what else can you ask for? We found two recipes for Bloody Marys inspired by the book. One of them called Bloody Carrie was created by Tim Federley for his book Tequila Mockingbird, and it involves vodka, tomato juice, lime juice, Worcestershire sauce, hot sauce, and wasabi paste. The second one we found at the Tipsy Librarian, a blog dedicated to book reviews paired with a beverage, among other things. And I want to talk about Kim by Rudyard Kipling. The Kim in the title is actually short for Kimbo. Kim, or Kimbo, is a young man living as a vagabond in the streets of Lahore, and he befriends a Tibetan monk in his quest to liberate himself from the wheel of life. As the 19th century is ending, and Great Britain and Russia are playing the great game over Central Asia, this book relates the adventures of the two friends, while also depicting the people and cultures of India along the way. If you would like to spend a couple of weeks following in the footsteps of Kim and the Lama, Wiki Voyage provides an extensively curated itinerary, and we have links for it in our page. This itinerary contains mostly travel by train, and all the stops contain practical information regarding travel in the present day, as well as how the locations relate to the story by Kipling. And what about this first name, Candide by Voltaire? Candide is another of those first name titles that embodies the main quality of the character. After all, Candide can mean naive in French, the original language of the novel. And for those who are incurable optimists, they might be closer to a cure after reading this book. We meet Candide as a good natured man, no matter what life throws at him, and it's quite a lot, until he discovers that not everything happens for a reason and all is not for the best. Voltaire is a brilliant satirist and a comedian with great timing. And if you like Voltaire's comedy in Candide, you might like a literary joke inspired by Voltaire. What do you think of a writer's block? I am referring to an actual block of wood with Voltaire's portrait on it. Appealing? You can buy it at Literary Lodge by visiting the link in the show notes. Another first name known by book lovers is Orlando by Virginia Woolf. And there might be only one name in this title, but there are three versions of the same person across centuries in this book. Virginia Woolf wrote this book to immortalize her friend and lover Victoria Saxville West. And Victoria's own song later said the book was, and I quote, the longest and most charming love letter in literature. Fiction to Fashion, a blog we mentioned on episode six for an outfit inspired by a book with read in its title, has created another outfit inspired by Orlando that combined feminine pieces with some androgynous ones to fit this book perfectly. I think the outfit looks chic and comfortable, and if you want to take a look at the outfit picture and information regarding where to purchase every item, you can visit our show notes for a link. We decided to review this title using only six words this week. Here it goes. Elizabeth and men, becomes 20th century woman. You can tell us your own at Six Word Review in our page. 
And we cannot talk about first name titles without talking about Ulysses by James Joyce. Ulysses is another first name title associated with specific emotions, this time about the book itself rather than the character. And this is because this novel is often cited among the most challenging books in the English language. Ulysses follows Leopold Bloom, an Odysseus from 1904, on a day around Dublin. And this is Joyce's ultimate ode to Dublin, the city, in his unique style. The day immortalized in the book is June 16th, known as Bloom's Day among literature lovers. And this is an event celebrated around Dublin today. On June 16th, if you are a fan of Ulysses, you might want to be in the city of Dublin for the occasion. You can enjoy the famous Bloom's Day breakfast, visit David Byrne's pub, and enjoy street performances of the novel all around the city. You can find the program and all information for the festival by visiting the Bloom's Day site linked in the show notes. The cover of the 1990 paperback edition published by Vintage is our selection this week for our cover gallery. In this cover, the letters for the title of the book are used to create a caricature of Joyce, and we think it fits the theme of the episode quite well. One book I really enjoyed reading is Coraline by Neil Gaiman. This is Gaiman's first novel, and what a triumph. It can be described as a darker Alice's adventure in Wonderland. When Caroline moves with her mother and father to Pink Palace Apartments, she finds a door that opens to another world, with another mother and another father, where everything looks perfect until it doesn't anymore. The 2009 animated film adaptation of Coraline has been well received among critics and the general audience alike, and you can watch the trailer on our page. For fans of Coraline, and we know we are many, we found a bounty of items that would make great gifts. If you love Coraline, wouldn't you like your very own Pink Palace Apartments keychain from Ladybug and Baby Bird, or your own Seeing Stone from Whittian's Forest? Maybe you prefer a Coraline-themed candle from the book Nerd Fox, or a Coraline-themed zipper pouch from Red Bubble. Links to all of these items can be found on our page. Welcome to our section, Book vs. Book, and we have a double feature this week. For the first pair, we have chosen two plays by Shakespeare with first name titles. The book I'm presenting is Hamlet, and one thing you might have noticed is that several of Shakespeare's plays are titled using just the first name. But it could be argued that Hamlet, with its to be or not to be soliloquy, is among the most famous ones. The setting of Hamlet is believed to be Kronborg Castle in Denmark, and this is an easy train ride away from Copenhagen. If you visit the castle, you can take a tour guided by Horatio, Hamlet's friend, or you can see Hamlet's reenactments during the summer. I have been to Kronborg Castle and this is a fantastic sight. However, I missed the reenactments by a week, so make sure you are a more careful planner than me if you really want to see them. My pick is Othello by William Shakespeare. The play narrates the passion between a Venetian lady and Othello, a Moorish prince, as it turns into tragedy. Othello is manipulated by Iago, his tender bearer, into believing his wife is unfaithful. Thanks to the play, the name Othello itself has been associated with jealousy. And for our second pair of contenders, we're featuring two books with female names on the title, and they both describe settings of gothic gloom. My pick is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. And among book lovers, the name Rebecca is almost synonym with gothic settings. Curiously, Rebecca is not the name of the narrator. In fact, the first name of the narrator is never known. She's a lady's maid who marries a wealthy widower and goes to live in his mansion, Menderley. And once there, she has to endure as Rebecca's shadows looms over the marriage and the household. The book was adapted to screen in 1940, directed by none other than Alfred Hitchcock. But if old movies are not your thing, maybe you would like to recreate the tea described in chapter 2, which was the inspiration for a crumpets recipe from the Little Library Cafe, and you should follow the recommendations for serving them with excess butter, jam, and honey. And my pick is Carmela by J. Sheridan Le Fanu. This book precedes Dracula. In fact, it inspired Bram Stoker to create his famous vampire character. In this novella, however, both the vampire and the victim are female. 
Make sure you head to our page and cast your vote for your favorite between Hamlet and Othello. Or Rebecca and Carmela. We're going to make a brief pause and we're going to be back for guesswork. Welcome back to Guesswork. Let's start with the answer to last week's episode and it was The Color Purple by Alice Walker. For this week, can you guess which book with the first name in its title we have chosen if we read you the first line and an excerpt? Let's start with the first line. Handsome, clever and rich, with a comfortable home and happy disposition, seem to unite some of the best blessings of existence and had lived nearly 21 years in the world with very little to distress or vex her. And here's the excerpt from page 69. Mr. Elton, this is the most extraordinary conduct, and I can account for it only in one way. You're not yourself, or you could not speak either to me or of Harriet in such a manner. Command yourself enough to say no more, and I will endeavor to forget it. If you think you know it, you can let us know by visiting our page, twobookramblers.com. Before the end, let me tell you about two books coming out this week that I would like to recommend. The first book is D, A Tale of Two Worlds by Michelle Faber. What if one morning you wake up and there is one letter which has completely disappeared from the alphabet? Well, that's what happens to Di Kilo, the protagonist of the story, who finds out one day that D, her initial, has completely vanished from all conversation. Soon after, things that also start with the letter D starts vanishing, and in the middle of all these strange happenings, she is summoned to the home of her old history professor, Dutterfield, and she is sent on a quest which celebrates human courage and the privilege of free thinking. The book is aimed to young readers, but many adults will find this book delightful as well. The second book is The Invention of Medicine by Robin Lane Fox. And this book might get very academic at some points, but for those of you interested in medical history, this could be a fascinating nonfiction read. Robin Lane Fox explores the birth of Western medicine in ancient Greece, offering novel information about Hippocrates and the collection of texts known as the Epidemics. The book also illustrates how medicine in ancient Greece influenced Greek drama, Greek art, and Greek culture in general. If you know of any other books with a first name for a title, let us know in the comments. And if you would like to purchase any of the books covered in our show today, you can visit our TBR Bundles page for a list of titles. If you like our show, subscribe to our newsletter and rate us and review us wherever you listen to podcasts. Until next time, do as Shakespeare said, and love all, trust a few, do wrong to none.